welcome back to This Is Hardcore Podcast. It's been a minute. Thank you for still listening. This is Poison Seeds, the track Blame the Wish, many moons ago, which is many, many, 19 years ago, we went on a little run with an amazing Canadian band called Hollow Ground. My boy Avrinder got this new project. Shit is fucking amazing. Hope you guys support this. Uh, one of the things that I've taken from Hardcore, we talked about it multiple, multiple, multiple times, but bears repeating is that some of this journey is the people that you run into. The people that serendipitously end up playing shows with, staying at their house, doing the things that we do. And if you're lucky, some of the people stay around intermittently throughout the whole time. But it's always awesome when you run into someone. You know, it's actually what I'm saying. It's cool that you could be some kid from Philadelphia and know some kid from Canada, play some shows together. Almost 20 years later, you're talking about the new band they have. It's fucking cool. And that kind of cool outweighs so much of the bullshit. Enough that it's still worth being here. And bullshit, bullshit, my friends. Let's say bullshit, my friends, we have a plenty. My latest favorite thing is the every couple years... Someone who, for whatever reason, decides that they're the one that are going to topple the empire here. Go out and start getting upset about lyrics from old bands. Things that happened before they were born, practically. And uh, if I was to play both sides... Yeah, you know what? If you're looking at lyrics in today's lens, you're going to find yourself... Having to accept that before you were born and this thing started, there were folks who are super important in the in the way of not because they were popular, but because of the deeds, the things that they did, the actions that they were taking to make this all happen. That, you know, you're not going to agree with them from a lens from 40 years into the future. And a, and a good argument is that over time, maybe, yeah, the the the, the political power, paradigm shift is going to happen and politics will shift. And I'm sure the people that you're upset about will probably agree with you in today's thing. But what happens is, is every once in a blue moon, some new person who is trying to be the big wig and I'm too cool to like an old band. Or, this is why we don't have to like old band. They bring out all the, the usual goofy shit they were taught in college about ripping down, you know, systemic this and blah, 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 that. And, and it's all for not. You know, it, it's really all for not. And I, the best thing I can tell you is that it is important to understand that not everybody has to come to a full political agreement to be in the same room or to be a part of the same scene. And that's lost on everybody today. You know, it's, it's, it's plain and simple that the common parlance of our time is to argue online, attack people's character for a belief structure or an idea that doesn't go with their politics. And really, the internet's the shittiest form to have these kind of conversations. Be it the anonymous user names that allow people to derail the conversation or say something with their whole chest that they don't want on their public name because then they would have repercussions. Or just people that just like stir the pot. But when we're talking about People being like, fuck agnostic front. And yet in the same breath, ignore so many other things like the bad brains, etc., etc. I mean, the the issue at hand isn't 
these bands were problematic or these people did these things. It's that the culture, whether it was now or in the 70s, 10 years, it doesn't matter the timeline. These are human beings and they're they're working out their shit. And maybe they're not as adjusted or formally educated in the nuances of propriety. Which again, the the the, par- the, the in, there's an entire counter argument in every way for every kind of argument politically, and it's been that way since politics started, when it was old dudes in togas standing in front of a town discussing. You know that's the way it works, but I would say that for me, I I don't like to attack the specific people but more the ideas that these people have. Um, you know, there is a bizarre factor here that the same people who want to be punk and individuals and believe that their mind is free and that they're open are doing so many things that I sure like the counter to it in a lot of ways, you know, um, I found it ironic that the anti-immigrant comments and stuff like that, talking about Roger lyrics or the public assistance lyrics, etc. You know, this same person who has these quandaries and complaints voted for our current president. And within the same time frame... 10 years minus, 10 years extra, whether it's the 70s, 80s, or 90s, our same president, by today's standard, you can Google it, has had many racist tropes. Horrible things, including the N-word, on (laughs) actual political, like really, like I I don't understand the word, because it wasn't like in Congress, but in in a political faculty with a microphone in public saying the n-word and you and this is your guy this is your guy and that's the blood that's on everybody's hands and that's more or less what i'm trying to get to here because some of what was being brought out was like you know we've got agnostic front out here and you people still respect them and then somebody chimed in about the bad brains and it's like you know, the entire hardcore scene nearly abandoned the bad brains in some form until they released whatever next record and toured and then everybody forgot how homophobic the bad brains were and how it, like, fucked up their entire relationship with a record label, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these things are just lost to time. But the modern idea that fucks me up is that people who are free-thinking individualisms, P-type people, individualist think for myself are still thinking in this red blue idea and I've always thought that that was a little bizarre from the video games I've made this tweet and said it in a million different ways but if you're voting for a major candidate party you're probably voting for the establishment because the establishment wouldn't give you the opportunity for pure choice and you can tap yourself on the shoulder and say whatever you want About Mr. 45, I didn't vote for him, and I was happy to see so many people being super happy about our current president, and then completely ignoring the pitfalls of today's society that we're all dealing with, which includes being American, and having to accept that we have no real power in the public capacity to stop the war machine. And yet, here we are, arguing about agnostic front, calling different people racist for whatever stupid reasons, and yet you voted for a person who, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, said some awfully public, awfully racist shit while holding public office. And has been a war hawk their whole career, and yet being anti-war, pro-Palestine, 
anti-genocide. Ignore the fact that if we're playing the game of red or blue, both sides have committed us as Americans to the guilt that comes from the world power necessities that are just bigger than an internet argument. It's not even good enough to talk about it here on this podcast. The only reason why I'm even bringing it up is because Hardcore has been pulled in so many stupid directions politically by basically children who have a complete uh, brainwashed, in my perspective, a brainwashed opinion that so much of society is not right and here are the reasons why. And it comes specifically from the people that went to colleges and took classes specifically for that. And they usually target their ire at people like me who go to work every day in the trades and are seen as like the other opposing team. And yet, I tell you time and time again, the average person in America is a good person. The average person, the middle down the middle, doesn't matter what race, what gender, what religious background, the average person is still good because they have their own things to worry about. And their whole life focus isn't on this geopolitical spectrum. We're not all sunny things. And we also don't have the capabilities to change anything. And I think that gets lost. So instead, there's this upset, angry debate constantly streaming. It's poked at Agnostic Front. Then everybody was lauding and celebrating Jell and Scal not playing South by Southwest because of the importance of, you know, U.S. Army being involved and the Raytheon support. And it's not hypocritical. It's a bit performative, but it's not hypocritical. And the bands have every right to decide they want to play a show or not play a show for whatever reason. But at a certain point in time, America is based upon consumerism. And I posted a meme because it just showed the level of other companies owned in part by BlackRock. And you just have to kind of feel completely, not useless, but you have to understand that American, like we are Americans and we are mass consumers. And if you want to argue that, you're wrong. If you're a hardcore kid and you don't want to support BlackRock, you're going to look at the fact that they are, they own Amazon, Microsoft, Dow Chemical, um, Exxon, Verizon, PayPal, Walmart, Facebook, Chevron, Disney, Tesla, Netflix, Lowe's, Visa, um, Uber. I'm trying to go over the ones that just the hardcore kids would use. Any number of these um, banks, Comcast, all the pharma companies which give you your medicines, 3M, all, most of the major news. Like one company in this big global world owns all of this. So if you want to go ahead and you want to not play a show in support of everything that's going on over there, that's your, that's your job to some degree as a punk rock person to stand up to something. But it's a, it's a futile and performative move because... Just buying something somehow, if you really want to start doing the blame game and following every cent to where it's going to land, most of American dollars end up in the hands of the evil corporations that are doing all these things. And as regular ass Americans, and then more importantly, as hardcore kids, we're all part of the process of, unless you did grow up with a silver spoon and you don't have to wake up and go to school or a job, You know, like you just want to get up and make sure that you still can afford to eat, have a place to live, enjoy some things with your family or the people you love. And you're not, you're not going as deep, man. And yet here we are again and again, attacking our own. You know, this is why people shouldn't even talk about Gnostic Front. It's like, get the fuck out of here. You know, like we're we're all in here. We're not incapable of mistakes. And then retroactively, every couple decades... There's a social paradigm shift in what was 
seen as okay is no longer okay, and some things come back in vogue and do the reverse. But a lot of this shit is completely out of our hands. And that's why this music becomes so fucking important. Because we don't have control of our own destinies. However, you can be against the U.S. Army. You can be against these crazy, um, uh, what do they call it? Like the profiteers, the military industrial complex. You could be against all that. And I'd say, yeah, that's all fucked up. But you were blessed to be born, if you were born in America, not having the same percentile threat of an outside country invading, a bomb landing on your house or your place of worship or your school. We have a lot of street crime and a lot of social problems that tear the the people apart so we're at each other's throats instead of being at the government. But as a whole, because of this insane military industrial complex that has made a lot of things in the world fucked up, we have an inherent benefit that it would take something really insane. And it probably would be manufactured by our own government because they're equally fucking crazy. And a lot of the shit that goes bad only it goes bad when we allow it to go bad so we can incite some nonsense like the entire war in the Middle East, which killed millions. And by the way, multiple presidents sat in and allowed untold billions to be made by millions of people dying. You know, same, you know, everyone hated the, the George Bush Jr. and Barack did even more damage. It's a paradigm shift. But not really. Like you know, the the game plan stays the same. This guy's getting this office that you fight and argue with your aunt and your uncle about. It's red. It's blue. It's red. It's blue. And people get in the office and they blow everybody the fuck up. And then the 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 fucking wheels spin, and you feel better about it if it's your person, your color, your team that dropped the bomb. And you just say, we had to do it because the other guy fucked up. So I'm just getting tired of it. It's unnecessary. And again, I, you know, I'm i friends with the people in SCAL. And so it's not like, fuck SCAL. It's just like, this is the way the world works. If you don't want to play a show that you've played three or four times, that's totally on you. There's a punk rock ethos to it because maybe some people are like, yeah, that's right. But then they also don't have a phone with Verizon and don't use Uber and don't use Amazon and... You know, fuck filling up your car gas and don't play any EA Sports and don't use a computer with an NVIDIA chip. And the list just goes on and on and on. Don't drive a Ford. Don't use Facebook. Bank of America. Sailor Lee. Adobe. Don't use... I love my Adobe. Am I supposed to not use my Adobe while this Palestine thing's going on? How about, you know, like I go to the Home Depot like it's like it's church. Costco. I mean, the list goes on and on. I get it. I get the reasons for these things. But the bigger picture is a lot of the stuff that's happening at the world stage was decided before any of us get to pretend that this little thing that we do two times a year and go into this stupid little building. In Philadelphia, it's literally ridiculous. Like The shows that we run are equal to the task. It's it's checking in people to vote. It's so DIY, it's almost respectable. But then it's also like, this is so DIY... There's no way it can't be fucked with. <laughs> it's so fucking paper and pencil type shit. Or worse, a computer that could be hacked, but that's a whole nother podcast with me and Richie and G arguing, not this one. Bigger point, I'll bring it to it because I've blabbered for fucking 20 minutes here, is that hardcore people should respect their own community and not constantly try to tear it apart so there could be some kind of like, see, I don't like Agnostic Front. I like this band who probably, in principle, does good things, but then you don't know the backstory from what happened between 1979 and whatever. So you could equally be supporting someone who may have said all the right things but did shitty things, and there's plenty of these kind of older bands that did that, and I'm not going to bring them up because it's not my fucking business. Essentially, the long and short of it is, We are unfortunately consumers of products that go back to the basis 
of the military industrial complex in some way or big farm, which is also tied into that. So we are not directly, but indirectly supporting these things. So we all have blood on our hands and you decide what you want to do with that. Me, I'm going to get up in a couple of hours, go to work, fill up my car with Exxon gas. I'm going to use whatever TV show Verizon allows me with the Wi-Fi to watch Rick and Marty or something. And I'm going to eat food that probably is connected as well with BlackRock owned companies. And I'm going to be thankful that the Lord or whatever power it is that brought me to this earth put me in a place where every day I'm not worried about my fucking house being shelled over either territory, resources, or an ancient argument about faith. And I think that we as a group need to stop trying to attack institutions that have done nothing but benefit and promulgate and promote and, you know, and especially in the modern time, form up and shore up the, 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 the fun and the security and the future of hardcore. You know, a couple of people had said things like, well, FYA, they could have went here. It's like, it's no reason for Bob to have to change his venue because of something happening thousands of miles away that he has no fight in and he can't change the outcome of it. The show must go on is the words, right? And I'll, I'll get off this point by saying this, this show must go on. And I've been in times where I had complete brain freeze. I didn't have it. I popped a good one out the other time. Sat down here this time last week. I thought I had a good one. The Poison Seeds gimmick was on. I'm sorry, guys, for being later with this. And I don't know what I did. I hit this button. I hit another button because I'm a little bit off. And next thing you know, I don't got a podcast because... I didn't save the file right and it went to shit and it was really emotionally draining and I just have to get back onto my feet start getting the ball roll quicker bring guests on make the time we finally got things out of my mother's former house and we're moving forward with a celebration of life thing and I, I'm not someone to sit at home and cry and be f- visually upset but my 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 thoughts have been strained and I have been not able to have the thinking time to think out these podcasts where I just do them by myself we haven't scheduled guests because our schedule after work has been so hard I don't know what day we're not tying up loose ends or have the ability to tie up loose ends because of work so I apologize I know it's episode 150 it's not much of a grand episode by any stretch, but it, it's an apology made to you that I'm actually going to redouble the efforts and focus with This Is Hardcore announced in just about a month. The balls, as we say, the gears of war. <laughs> the the ball is running hard. The, we are working on a lot of different aspects that have nothing to do with the show itself, but the way the promotion end of the shows goes with new logos, different rollouts, We've got some sponsors, usual folks, new some new folks. Uh, lineups are really starting to come around, and we're gonna go really fucking hard. So this is the quiet before the storm, in the actual this is hardcore fest. For those of asked who didn't see it a million times, it's Friday, August second at under at the Union Transfer <laughs> Underground Arts, <laughs> and then it's Saturday and Sunday, three and four at Franklin Music Hall in Philadelphia. Once again, keeping it there. And we're going to have a lot of cool shit. Some bands you guys have never seen. Some bands you may never have heard of. And tons of bands you love. That's the whole point of all this. That's the point of this whole entire thing. Is to celebrate our movement. Our bands. Our friends. Our culture. And I I was thinking about, you know. uh, I was thinking about a lot of stuff, if I'm being honest with you. But, um. It really just, it's starting to just not even be interesting to see someone make complaints. You know? Um, I I know that may sound um, weird, but 
I was thinking about, you know, they say like, forgive us our trespasses and we will forgive those who trespass against us. And I, I don't care if you're not religious and I don't care if you're too punk rock to even know what the fuck that comes from. But the idea is that we would want to be in a society where everybody has equal everything. And equal everything isn't just the rights that are entitled, but there's also like an equal responsibility. And I think that's something that's starting to lack in this community. I think it's in communities in general are lacking this principle because the way that these things work with these multinational corporations and these monster Goliath tech companies is that they're a digital arm of the propaganda that all the things that are bad in this world need to keep people separated. So yeah, if you're young, you don't like lyrics from Agnostic Front, give it a viewpoint of, well, you know, I'm sure they're not still feeling that same way. And, you know, Roger's book is absolutely incredible. If you guys haven't checked it out, all these older guys are now coming out with amazing books and you'll understand their viewpoint a lot better. This is a fucking guy who had to leave Cuba, changed his entire life. It's, his story is incredible. Roger Murray, uh, his movie, The Godfather, Hardcore. It's one of the great documentaries and just like, I get almost emotional, but I also like get invigorated watching it because these are the people that helped found what we're still carrying on. So I say to you is if you're having a problem with people in hardcore, forgive us our trespasses and we will forgive those who trespass against us. And that's really saying, I hope, you know, like if people are in violation or, you know, doing something that really isn't the end of the world, let's just move on because we would hope that if we give someone the breath and width to make a mistake, that one day it'll come back to us and we'll be able to make a mistake and it not be the end of the fucking world. That's lost. Everything's a fucking fight and everything's finality. Everything's black and white. But the gray area is, if you're going to say to me, well, this band's doing really good because they're not playing this show that supports the U.S. Army. It's like, well, why would you not want the U.S. to have a good army? Because if we didn't have a good army, we'd be getting bombed right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, Regardless of whatever your social politics are, I don't ever, ever trust any of the people in hardcore with a cabs. Whether you were a fucking rich kid, a poor kid, a dude who you know went from crew kids to bikers, everybody who is adamantly anti-cop, it makes it an entire personality to me is sketchy. And looking at crime, looking at friends who are doing time looking at uncles and family members who have done time, everybody says they're against the cops who are about to go to jail and then they're rats. And that's the fucking way it usually works. And every kid who's got an ACAP tattoo today, you do anything to them, they're calling the fucking cops. Or they're going to go on the internet and hope someone else calls the fucking cops. So let's stop that with that silly bullshit. That's just the fucking way it is. Just stop with the fucking bullshit. Stop with this fighting with somebody and telling people they can't listen to the Agnostic Front or being upset that the FYA is held at an amazing Jewish uh, community center that has given Hardcore a great home and have never even remotely been political in any regards to anything. It's never told us we can't have certain things in there. That's the shit that's wrong. That's the... That's an idea... That's a person with an idea who wants to control and make everybody... Follow them. And that's not hardcore. It's not part of punk rock. It's not a free thinker. It's not an individualist. Someone who wants to manipulate people into feeling that they supported something wrong and that their idea is better and that their idea is what everybody should do. I just don't agree with it. If you don't like where someone's at, at a show or like the venue don't fucking go. And if you're a band and you don't like the politics of it, cool. You guys don't also have to play. Everyone has a free choice, but don't tell everybody what to do and what to listen to because you start sounding like the thing that you swear you're not. And I'll leave the words out because you know what the fuck it is. We were raised on being free thinkers, having the freedom to agree and disagree as long as we hold up some real tenements and that certain words, certain phrases, certain things that 
act are completely out of bounds and will be held accountable. And the other part of accountability is that understanding that when people don't act on something, instead of saying, well, you know, you guys didn't do anything. Maybe a lot of the people who would act on it don't know what's going on. I hear that a lot. Well, you guys didn't do this. Well, maybe no one told us until after the fact when there's 40 apology note iPhone things all over Twitter being like, well, no one did anything. Well, maybe no one knew about this personal shit between two people. You know, long time things have been handled in-house with the respect of we take care of our own. I'm just tired of seeing people with just stupid usernames who I've never seen in, in real life telling us we can't listen to Agnostic Front, telling us that we're complicit in supporting a genocide, telling people that they have to give the money to a show to the to a refugee thing because the person wrote something on Instagram. Like, ah, get the fuck out of here. No one owes you anything in this entire world, whether you like that or not. That's the sad thing about this whole thing. You're born, as Leeway said, you're born to expire, but you're born and you have to roll with what is in front of you, what you can make of it. And if you find yourself in hardcore, you should be more of the mindset of a person who forgives trespasses instead of looking for trespasses and trying to bring everybody up on charges of, well, you're a trespasser, <laughs> you know? And I have also a worry that when people act like this, they've got their own bodies hidden somewhere. And I wonder why they're so mad and constantly trying to tear people down. That's what I got for you. Sorry, it's not a the most amazing thing in the entire history of the world, but it's just been on my mind. I don't like getting too political unless it's rule of three, because I have Richie and G, and we can make it funny. But however, because of my... Uh, my lately, my brain freeze on everything. I haven't had the opportunity to really sink this in. So, with the current things. So, here we go. Takedown, which is not only amazing records, but it's also Greg and Dylan, who are doing amazing shows in New Jersey. Saturday, April 6th, Mind Force, Gridiron, Out of Pocket, Hold My Own, Geigen, and Disguise. And this one is at, where's the fucking print? Was Salty's Beach Bar, a great place. Then we've got April 27th, Takedown. This is April 27th on Saturday. Missing Link, Hardcore Unity, Wreckage, Envision, Crush Your Soul, Lead Spirit, and Cut Down as well. That Crush Your Soul shit, man. Pretty fucking dope. Excited to see it. And if you didn't want to go to New Jersey, well, guess what? My fucking brother Bob got one too. Saturday, May 4th, a Bob Wilson joint, Hangman. New World Man, Crush Your Souls, Heads Will Roll, Heart of Man, and Sudden Demise. Zach Barone, Back on the Mic, Baby Boy, Round 2, a new band. That's May 4th at the Yuki Club in Philly. Awesome fucking shows. Um, the Drain Show in Philly, you can catch it at Underground Arts. Drain Terror, Scowl, Twitching Tongues, King Nine, End It, Mutually Sure Destruction, May 25th. This whole weekend of that shows are going to be fucking nuts. In fact, talking about the weekend, because we got shows coming up, uh, we have a show at the Log Cabin this Saturday, which is like conservative military image, I believe. Let me go to the let me go to the take let me go to the takedown, the official. Because I was just talking to this Greg. I was talking to this Greg, and I said I would pop some of these shows. Let me see where the see this is the problem with him. That's why we don't want to fuck with you, Greg. Oh, here it is. March 16th, which is this Saturday. The log cabin. Conservative military image. Haywire. My little brother Austin. His new band. Never again. One of the great fucking fast, true, pure, hardcore. And please die with Wallbreaker, Witness Chamber, and Fool's Game. Uh, doors are actually 3 p.m., which is kind of sick. And the show should be over by 8. For those people who don't want to be out all night in New Jersey, getting hit by fucking deer and fucking the Jersey Devil and whatever else is on them roads. Check that motherfucker out. You know, the show's all over. The fucking weather's breaking and it's a good time to be at shows where we're hanging out in real person and not arguing on the internet. Bob has April 9th, 
Distort, Mill Spec, Collateral, No Exceptions, and an awesome band. And Headless World, I don't, I'm not familiar with their music, but they're from Philly. April 9th, the Cuzzy Danny's, which is like 50th of Market. It's going to be a fucking cool-ass shit. Uh, next week, actually, since we're almost there, Tilted, Conduit, Industrial Grade, Chemical Cleaner, No Quarter, that band given, Exposed, and that's at Bonx. Another cool one. And then a week, like four days later, from Florida, Sick Band, Domain, Fade and Singles, uh, No Quarter Given, Dorsus Listness, Skit, that's out. That's a Stucky John. That's at Bonx. And, uh, yeah, Bob Wilson doing the Lord's work. Same time frame. Oh, <laughs> out of Pocket Haywire. Final Resting Place, All Due Respect, which is the lumpy band that played a couple years ago. One of the first, actually the first Philly Hardcore show back from COVID and Discontent. And uh, this motherfucker... At Bonx as well. And then, um, yeah. We've got the Chisel in Philly with Conservative Military Image, Homefront, and Rage and Ruin, which is the new band, Mike and Steve and Magoo from Please Die Have. Sound like uh, some 1982 always skinhead UK shit. Absolutely fucking love it. There's a lot going on in the positive world. Uh, Bob's Hope Conspiracy Show finally sold out. Fucking great for Bob, and um, I can't believe they're doing this as, as a at Bonx. St. Patty's Day is Witness Chamber, Bankrupt, Odiame, Execute, and God Instinct. So, a lot of good shit, and um, I should, uh, I guess I'll, I guess I'll say this, I don't, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I guess I will. Fury of Five is playing the following week. And it's uh, 30 years of them being a band, which is fucking awesome. Uh, Fury of Five, Demise, Combust, Freight Train, Gloves Off, Discontent, Blackest Dawn, and Tear Gas. Tear Gas got Gene from Second to None. Blackest Dawn is the Shattered Realm guys. Um, Chris Rafalowicz, the singer. Al, drummer, and Alex, guitar. Uh, Discontent, you know the deal. And that's at Lake Cuomo. Um, Salties, gonna be fucking awesome. And, uh... Definitely don't miss the Fury. Don't miss the Fury Five Thirtieth uh, show. It might have a little um, surprise for you if you actually show up. I'll leave it there. But a lot of good hardcore shows happen, so we shouldn't be sitting here arguing with people we don't know about something we don't believe in. And if we don't believe what someone's saying, hey man, you know what? You can just peacefully say I don't agree with you, but respect and move on. You know, you can block the person. You can just ignore them because at the end of the day. You got to worry about getting up and doing this every single day. And you could kill yourself in guilt and worry that by doing certain things, you're actively seeking to support the death of other people. When the more fucked up thing is that no matter what we do, every dollar we make gets taxed. And that tax money, if you believe they even use that, end up going and bombing people in other countries that we'll never know about and people die. That's just the unfortunate nature of what, for whatever your creator of choice, your God, for whatever reason, that's the way that this world works, is you could buy something and unfortunately that profit can go on to go into someone's coffers who will then make a bomb and it'll kill some kid who never had a chance in life. So stop attacking your fucking own people and blaming them for everything because we have such a limited capacity to control our own destiny to let alone sit there and be blamed for willingly supporting a death, math, death, whatever. We don't have that level of, of control and we don't have that level of complicity And I'm not going to be fucking guilted by some idiot on the internet who probably equally supports the same stupid shit with their consumerism they need to survive in the same country. That's all I got for you. Good night. Next week will be a little bit more positive and less nonsense. Thank you to all my friends who have supported us, everybody who's checked in. And this hardcore season is almost upon us. Um, To all my Celtic friends, let's enjoy some of these St. Paddy's. And just remember what I said. 
Remember the part about forgiving those who trespass against us. All right? Goodbye.